All right, so my name is Rob Hilliker, and I'm the repository manager at Columbia University's Center for Digital Research and Scholarship. Yeah. Let's get again. Ah. All right. Stop. I get to do that over here? You don't play the right thing. Wait a minute. Is the, is the video? The video is taping. Oh, it's just taping. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. All right. So yes, you know who I am. Uh, you probably don't know who she is. This is Alma Mater, the symbol of Columbia University. I always put her in the first slide of all my presentations, just to emphasize how solid the repository is. <laughs> because let's face it, symbolism is really important. And just as an indication of that, take. Dorothy Sallow's Innkeeper at the Roach Motel, which still seems to resonate, and I can't believe it's only four years ago that this article came out, but it still seems to resonate as a, the symbol of the repository manager. Um, I reread it a few weeks ago, and it's very good. I recommend you do it too, but I also think it's time for a new symbol. So I give you the, the humble beekeeper. The humble beekeeper mining the hive, ensuring ample supplies of sweet and delicious research output honey for our sustaining scholarly biscuits. But what fertile fields must the beekeeper inhabit in order to ensure the productivity of the hive? Well, for myself, I, I moved last year to the fertile fields of Morningside Heights, which is where Columbia is located. And at what I found there was a university where all areas are expected to advance knowledge and learning at the highest level and to convey the products of its efforts to the world. That's a quote, mind you, from the university mission statement. And the library's strategic plan focuses on having centers of excellence like our own Center for Digital Research and Scholarship. I don't expect you to be able to read all that, especially not in 20 seconds, but what I want you to get out of it, other than the fact that we all have eerily similar silhouettes, is that we have a large and diverse team. Uh, yellow repository services, red video services, blue and green are uh, the team, and I knew I was going to run over, so I gave myself this slide uh, that does production services and uh, publication <coughs> services. We also have a head of scholarly communications program and a communications coordinator uh, in our group. But for, uh, let's learn a little bit about the history of the repository, shall we? In the beginning, we were on the Press's digital commons platform. Um, but when they parted ways with ProQuest and we lost the access to our historical uh, theses and dissertations, we moved to DSpace. But that was really a false start and we moved very quickly to Fedora Commons. Um, and that decision was made at the point at which the center was created and took responsibility for the repository. We've also added Blacklight in, la in the last year as our, our search and discovery layer and we've seen wonderful results. This is sort of giving you a snapshot of the last year and a half. Uh, doubling in traffic. You can see that our search traffic makes up a huge proportion of our traffic now. This is more than double proportionally. And there's also an inflection point and growth in, in the collections. But how do we do it? Well, it's really not me, the lonely beekeeper. We have a team of beekeepers working together. That's, that's sort of my point here, is that you need a team in order to be able to have you know, that's the, that sort of outcome. And so the Cedars production team uh, have clearly been central to the success of our group. Uh, Mark Newton and three of the developers in particular on this team have worked closely with us, doing everything from you know, managing the solar index through to making improvements to the discovery layer to um, you know, coming up with um, novel services that we can build on top of the repository. So just as a quick example here, I, I love solar and I love blacklight. And, and one reason why I love it is you can see here you know, that we've got first out of over 9 million articles uh, on, a, on web pages on the subject in, in Google um, on smartphone architecture, no less. So, and we actually beat the computer science's own uh, repository of that article uh, in the search results. Some of the things that we've done is we've got uh, statistics reports for authors that point them back to where they can self-deposit their content on our site. We've got an author rights form that we've sort of rolled off separately that allows people to designate a proxy to deposit on their behalf. Um, just a whole bunch of wonderful things that the that team has been able to do. We also have a video team, which is unusual, but it's really, really wonderful for us because these guys are filming lectures and they're doing promotional videos for us. They're doing all sorts of uh, wonderful work and they can help route content into the repository. So as an example of that, we uh, had the Criminal Justice Caucus. We were actually talking to some of their colleagues in social work about 
redoing their website and other services. But these guys said, hey, we have a conference next week and we have a problem. We don't have a video team. Can you guys help us out? Well, sure, we can. And hey, can we take that keynote lecture by the famous uh, Angela Davis and put it in the repository? So just one example of, of a success story. Uh, we also have a great outreach team. So part of what we've been doing uh, under Layla Williams, the new communications coordinator, is really getting out a lot more in social media and providing social media sort of advising services to uh, groups that we work with. And you can see the results of that. I mean, if you want to talk about, you know, honey sweet, but what's even sweeter is having your content be cited in an article in the New York Times and seeing those hits coming in. Um, and this is an example of where, where that happened. A computer science technical report was actually cited in a New York Times uh, magazine article. So, I mean, I could tell you about many more projects because really cross-pollination is what's happening in this group. We have an EPUB project where we'll be working with some external partners and vendors. We have a data management plan working group where we bring in other librarians. So it's not just cross-pollination in the center, it's also with partners external to us, partners in the university. But, um, and I'm not going to read this slide, and this is actually for me to take a break and breathe, so if you can just read the takeaways. <sighs> All right, so everyone likes a good acronym, and at last year's OR, I remember hearing a lot of stuff about repository as a service. I said to myself, it's not repository as a service, it's library as a service. And I said, no, 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 that's not it either. It's library as a suite of services. That's what this is really about. That's what we're doing in the center. We're, we're get, building out common platforms that we can share to help people, you know, help build those hives, right? Moving from a siloed model to a hive model of supporting people's content creation. So if you have any questions, let us know. Um, we're always eager to talk to folks. We're always eager to find new partners to work on new projects with. So. Thank you.